What is up my friends? Welcome back to another video. And today let's talk about five sample libraries that I've used the most this year in 2021. Um, in the previous years, I've done kind of a deep look at all the sample libraries that I recommend, kind of the best sample libraries uh, for orchestral music. But instead of doing that this year, maybe I'll do that next year. Um, I think it's really important to drill down to the basics, the stuff that we always use on a regular basis. So I wanted to kind of share with you kind of the, the libraries that are always go-tos for me, the ones that I will always turn to if I'm in the need of a, if, if I'm in a pinch, if I need, you know, reliable libraries, these ones will always deliver. And uh, yeah, we won't go on too long here, but I want to give you an idea of what I personally use on a daily basis. And I've done videos on all of these libraries before, but I wanted to put out something that kind of shows you um, all these different libraries in one self-contained video. So before we do that though, I wanna give you my sample library buyer's guide in case you don't have it yet. It basically goes over all the libraries that I would use um, when demonstrating like a, a video going over like all the libraries that uh, th that are great for orchestral music, for example. But not only do we have strings and woodwinds and brass and percussion in there, there's also like piano libraries, there's jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, a whole bunch of stuff that's all contained within this guide. And it's pretty easy to read. You can read it all within an afternoon. Um, it's totally free. So if you want to check it out, just click the link in the box below. It'll take you straight there. And it's my thank you too for checking out this video today. So the very first library that I use on a regular basis is Cine Piano. I've used it for years now and I will continue to use it because it sounds wonderful. And you can see here, it's at the very, very top of my contact libraries page here. So I'm just going to play it a little bit and then we'll move on to the next library. So overall, a very clean, very bright sound. I just love how it sounds within the MGM scoring stage. It's simply a beautiful library. And it also has a very neutral classical tone, which works well for a variety of situations as well. So you could definitely use it for sound design, uh, create pads from it. You know, it handles EQ very well, all that good stuff. So highly recommend it on my end. Uh, let's take a look at Cinematic Studio Strings. This is library number two. And I think this is not a surprise to a lot of people. Um, you've probably followed me for any length of time. You probably know that um, I like Cinematic Studio Strings and it's just a workhorse library. It sounds great. And so let's play the violins patch just a little bit here.
So uh, you, you can see that it's not like a huge, huge variety of articulations, but the ones it does come with are kind of like the core articulations that you would need in a regular string library. And all the different patches are laid out in exactly the same way. So it's a very simple library. Uh, the patches are not overly heavy on your CPU, even though they're kind of coming in at around a gigabyte. The whole library is around 20, 25 gigabytes or something, I think, in total. So uh, very reasonable for a string library. The next library I use is the choirs in Time Macro and sometimes in Time Micro as well. But Orchestral Tools has these beautiful sound texture libraries uh, based on orchestral recordings. And so the choirs in them are simply gorgeous. Uh, these ones in particular are sustains only, but they also have legato choirs in the Metropolis Arc series as well. But have a listen to some of these odds here. Again, such a such a natural, clean, and warm sound, and it sounds so beautiful. I really enjoy it. Um, let's take a look at uh, Berlin Woodwinds next. So, ever since Cinematic Studio Woodwinds came out, I've been using that one as well. But the old trusty Berlin Woodwinds, this is uh, Revive in particular. It still serves the job. It still does what it needs to do very, very well, and it sounds great in an ensemble. So let's hear a couple of these patches here. Here's the flute legato. So that's the thing I love about the Berlin series in general is the sound is very neutral and very natural and very open. So you're not going to get a sound that's very like dark or overly hyped. Everything just sounds like it was recorded in a concert hall. It has a very classical type of film score type of feel to it. So I really just enjoy the overall signature and it doesn't, again, feel overbearing or wimpy or anything like that. It just fits within a mix beautifully and um, the sound is just beautiful. Obviously, in the context of a YouTube video, once it's been uploaded, there's a bit of processing that's applied to the sound, so it's not going to sound 100% as the, you know, the way I'm hearing it, but you still get a general sense of what it feels like. Okay, the final library, the fifth and final one, is Cineperk. In pretty much every single track that I do that needs uh, percussion, I am going to most likely turn to um, Cineperk. And uh, I'm just thinking here, I didn't add any brass libraries in here. <laughs> which I could have maybe instead of choir, but if I was to choose uh, a, um, a brass library, I would probably choose in a brass core, just so you know. But anyway, let's play their percussion just a little bit. So um, just so you know, Cineperk is very loud. It's it's recorded in, uh, very hot. So compared to a lot of other patches and a, a lot of other libraries, 
it's going to really stand out. So you gotta make sure you turn down the volumes of the contact patches. So percussion and brass specifically sound really good in the MGM scoring stage uh, for Cine Sample stuff. So that's why Cine Perk and Cine Brass are so widely regarded as being kind of top of the line libraries in the orchestral realm, even today. Even though these libraries are relatively older, they're a little more um, dated, but I think there's going to be updates for all the different Cine Symphony libraries in the coming years. So it's going to be exciting. But yeah. Those are kind of five libraries. If I really, really had to choose the ones that I use the most, these are ones that I will use in like 95% of my projects. So again, for piano, it's always going to be Cine Piano. For strings, there's always going to be a Cinematic Studio Strings Bass. Um, for choirs, most likely from Time Macro or Metropolis Arc from Orchestral Tools. Uh, Berlin Woodwinds as well from Orchestral Tools. And then finally, Cine Perk from Cine Samples. Hopefully that kind of uh, gives you an insight into my day-to-day -day workflow, what I like to use. And let me know, what is one library that you cannot live without personally? If you had to recommend a library to someone, if someone asked you what is like one go-to library for you, like a desert island library that you absolutely need for your work, what would it be? Let me know in a comment below. I would love to know. And again, if you don't have my sample library buyer's guide and you're looking for kind of a comprehensive resource on the libraries that I recommend and personally would use, then I want you to check it out. It's totally free, so you might as well grab it. It's in the description box below. So if you click the link, it'll take you straight there. And again, it's my thank you to you for watching this video. It's like the perfect accompanying guide to a video like this. Or if you've watched any of my other um, sample library videos before, going over all the different libraries that I've used in the past, then you'll uh, kind of be able to read over the, the descriptions of those libraries and why I would personally recommend them as well. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for sticking around. And again, let me know your favorite library in the comments below. Take care. I'll see you in the next video and have a great one. Bye-bye.